I have sailed with a crab claw on a tagging outrigger and on shunting proa, but what is the best way to rig one on a catamaran? I've seen it done several ways. One is to use an A-frame with the sail hanging in between. Another way is to use a stub mast with a halligan to pull the crab claw up. Yet another way, without a mast, is to just lift the sail up and hold it up with rigging. French Bohemi has a Pahi, Pahi 31 with a stub mast on the mizzen and an A-frame on the main. But the tack of the sail of the mainsail is not forward of the mast, so this is actually like an A-frame stub mast. And Ontong Java looks like it's got a very large stub mast, but if you look closely, you'll see it's actually a gaff rig, but proportioned to look like it is a crab claw. But then I read a book about the Jalanese Jukung and discovered that there was another way to do it. Have a mast prop like a proa, but with the tack forward of the mast. Like a proa, it can't tack, but instead of shunting, it jives. Release the sheet, oh, yeah. let the sail swing around the mast, and then she did it on the other side, an outside jibe. My friend Josh had a couple of old beach cats, and he didn't much like the aesthetics of the Bermudan rig either. So we thought we'd try a few different ways to rig them with the crab claw. It surprised me how well it all went together, but a bit of prior experience probably helped. This was the first iteration, using a bamboo mast and the sail from my prior. We had a light onshore breeze, so we had to get out enough to be able to jive and then still make progress out. Once we figured out that it went a lot better to windward if we pulled the tack over to the lee side, then um, it wasn't a problem. It would have been much easier if I, we could have left the tack in the middle the whole time, but that made it impossible to sheet in hard enough to sail sufficiently to windward. Also, compared to my proa, this boat had the novelty of having rudders that didn't require being invented. So we did a few more jibe practices. generally went pretty smoothly and if something did get caught you could push it around or something like that. The bamboo at the front did stick a bit when you pulled it over because of the knobs. But after a little bit of practice we got quite efficient at it. Out the other side we got into some clearer wind. One of the things that I really enjoy about the crab claw and my proa is that you can trim the boat, you can just adjust the sail and sort of do the sailing, do the steering that way, like you can balance the sail and it goes in, you know, and it keeps going in that same direction. So having a lot of adjustability was something I wanted on this um, crab claw too and I'd read that the Junkang had a way to like raise and lower the sail slightly so it moved the sail area around and being able to just, just the tack across was one of the things that I thought might work with this. That was a good view of the tack being moved. Josh also kindly offered to let me have a go just controlling it all myself and it was quite doable to be steering and uh, the sheet. Just turn down, release the sail, and then pull it back around. Then shift the sail, then shift the tack over. Yeah, so that went pretty well. That was day one. For day two, we made some new sails and tried to do a side-by-side -side comparison. We tried to do a side-by-side -side comparison between the A-frame and the outside jibe prop mast style. The sails both had very similar sail areas but were a slightly different design. Uh, Josh's one here having a slight curve on the on the crab claw that's a little bit skinnier overall, but we calculated like a, only like half a meter difference between the sail areas. Unfortunately, the GoPro didn't seem to understand Josh's accent. GoPro! 
turn on. We didn't get any more footage of it than um anyway, here's me on the other veg cat. Um I've got I've got the one with the garish colours and um straight spars. This time we've got much tighter uh, I mean less stretchy stays and it seemed possible to um, tack without adjusting the tack point though the mast was too bendy as you can see there is the boats were quite evenly matched um, this area was quite generally quite gusty so you'd go pretty much the same speed but if one boat got a, gut, got a bit more of a gust then it could speed up or pass the other one so it was kind of the racing was a bit inconclusive unfortunately My one had these um, kick-up rudders that were quite, um, well, quite were very good, but unfortunately, um, a little bit of hassle in shallow water. Yeah, and then the wind picked up a little bit later, and as you see, the mast is quite dangerously bending. Like this design has a a lot of compression on the mast and I was sort of sailing along and easing the sail um, you know before it got too much but then eventually I got distracted it just um, it popped So luckily we had two boats. We had we had one paddle between the two of us and um, made some effort to get ashore and that kind of worked. I would have got there eventually um, but in the end um, we towed this boat home and yeah um, that was day two. By this point we were sufficiently impressed with the prop mast configuration that we made masts by cutting down the old um, Bermudan masts which were aluminium and had no problems at all. And I also used some Dyneema I had to try quite keep cheaply to make the side stays. And um, this just works. So now everything was working pretty well and the um, for the pole at the front they slid across that would be replaced by an aluminium with no bumps on it so the tack could slide across although we'd found it at this point it wasn't really necessary if you had good side stays and tied them in a little bit um, could drive and sail to Woodward again without much problems. Good speed there. Nearly gaining on the others. There's two people on that boat, so yeah, still, they're still pretty close. wrapping it around the pole there, wrapping the sheet around the pole for make it a bit easier to grip. I've only got a two to one but it's quite a big sail. So 
So even in this quite gusty um, area, um, it wasn't really a problem being a, having to jibe. I never got too close to any of the moored boats. It would be quite difficult to sail the proa in this situation because with wind or gusty conditions and um, steering entirely by the sails with no rudder it makes it quite difficult in close quarters. But yeah, overall I was actually surprised by how easy it was to set up and rig and um, it really worked quite well and you did lose some ground driving but not really that much and it was never, never had the hassle of you know, beach uh, catamarans like this can be quite frustrating to attack where you have to like back the sail and back the rudder and push it over like jibing just made that disappear completely and you always had good good control you're completely in control when you're jibing because you're st if you're still moving you can still steer the downside being you lose a little bit of ground but not it's not really a huge problem so I thought I should include some footage of the this style of crab claw rig on a real jumper. So, because it's a sort of trimaran configuration, it has enough depth in the main hull for an unstayed mast, which it has, which it has set quite low on the on the yard. Um, that would make it quite difficult to pull up with a halyard. But here you see they just assemble it on the beach, and I think don't have a way to like lower the sail without taking the whole mast down. There's also a style with from a different island that has a much longer prop further back on the sail. This bit's clever, I hadn't seen this before. It's just the sail is rolled up on the bottom on the boom. So I'll be curious how the how the gooseneck actually works. But that looked like a good technique. Here it looks like sometimes they do go short distances with the sail backed on the other side but they can't really let the sheet out very far. And unlike most of the traditional boats in the Pacific, um, they actually use a, a definite rudder, um, not, just a, not just a steering oar. I'm not really sure what the weather conditions are like in Bali, but it seems to me like this is a boat design more oriented around sailing downwind Whereas the classic Micronesian prior is about sailing on, on a beam reach or a close reach or a broad reach um, back and forth to um, troll for fishing or to get to the other islands, which are sort of all like across the wind. Okay, going pretty good now. Um, it looks like on a broad reach. The um, outrigger floats are quite large diameter bamboo that have been smoothed and had like a nose put on it. So that's something, that's a plant that grows sort of like inland on the large island um, and doesn't really, isn't available on a, on a small coral at all. So I watched all of the Junkong videos I could find on YouTube and eventually I find, found one where they actually had a jibe. Here we go, turning downwind, releasing all the sail, let it swing forwards, and then just let go of the sheet. So I'm a rich westerner, so I just have two sheets, but letting go of the sheet. And then um, this surprised me, and then with the oar handle, use it like a boat hog and grab the sheet and pull it back in and you're going again. That did require turning, letting the boat turn up onto kind of like a broad reach at least. Anyway, so that's another viable way of rigging a crab claw on a catamaran, yeah. um, the jibe only method. Of course at first you think that jibing only is a quite a disadvantage and that's what I thought too, but after a bit of sailing on my catamaran 
I realized that when the shit's really hitting the fan, you probably can't tack anyway. So only being able to jibe is not actually a huge disadvantage and it's actually a significant advantage if the jibe is very gentle and safe, which it is when it to sell can just swim around the outside. So thanks for watching. My big boat's back in the water now, so I've got a bit of free time to catch up on the editing backlog. So there should be a few more videos coming soon. Thanks very much.